Okay. So there's now a, a real, another field, another uh, viewpoint of physics that implies that there may be an underlying scalar field underneath I mean, we go down to the, to the nanoscale. Uh, we have a par, a, atoms. We have subatomic particles. Below that, we have sub-subatomic particles. Below that, we have strings. But below that, there might be something called a scalar field. Now, what's a scalar field? Well, first of all, I have to explain the difference between a scalar and a vector. A vector, a scalar is a number, anything that can be described by a number, like Weight is a number. Temperature is a number. It's just described, you can, you can set it up as a number. That's all it is. It's just a, a, a unit. A vector field is what we're most commonly, uh, what we most commonly deal with, and that's anything that has a, a number and a direction. So, for example, if I say I'm going 30 miles an hour down the road, okay, 30 miles an hour is a scalar. That's the, my speed in physics terms. But my velocity in physics terms is 30 miles an hour east or 30 miles an hour south. In other words, it's both a magnitude, that is how fast I'm going, and a direction, what direction I'm going. Well, all the fields that we know about now, from the microscopic all the way up to the, to the vast you know, macroscopic fields, every field that physics knows about is a vector field. Electromagnetism is a vector field, gravity is a vector field, the subatomic fields are all vector fields. That is, they all have a direction associated with them as well as a magnitude. Okay? Now, vector fields have certain characteristics to them. One is that you can have a wave through them. Like electromagnetic field, you can have a wave and that's light. Okay? Everybody's familiar with that? So what does a light wave look like? Well, it's called, if the light wave is going in that direction, the light wave looks like this. This is actually a super simplified version um, and because I have to draw two light waves. One, one of these curves is electricity and the other one is magnetism and I can't draw this very well. But you have, if, if the light wave is going down towards the back of the room, the electrical part of the wave is going like this. And the magnetic part of the wave is going like that. Okay? You can think of it, that's called a transverse wave, where the wave motion is, tra is transverse, it's perpendicular to the direction that the wave is going. A wonderful example is an ocean wave, a water wave. The water bobs up and down, but the wave goes towards the beach. Right? Okay? That's a transverse wave. It's exactly like light. Well, almost exactly. It's wet. White light's not usually wet. But it's the same thing. It's exactly the way light, light moves. It, light wiggles side to side while it goes forward. Okay? There are other kinds of waves, though, and one of those is sound. Okay? So if I bang a drum, here's my drum. Okay? If I bang a drum, I'm going to cause sound waves to go out in all directions. Now, sound is interesting because sound doesn't, isn't like the side-to-side -side wiggle while it goes forward. When sound goes forward, it goes forward by a compression and a relaxation. In other words, air molecules are compressed and then they are relaxed. They're compressed and then they're relaxed. And they compress in the direction that the sound wave is going. Okay, so it's like boom, boom, boom. In other words, the wiggling isn't from side to side, it's in the same direction as the wave is going. And you say, why do I care? This is all physics crap. Well, you should care a lot because sound is also a scalar. Okay? It's, there's no direction associated with sound. It's just a scalar. It's how loud is it? Turns out, you know that famous thing that nothing can go faster than the speed of light? absolutely hard, rigid truth. Nothing can go faster than the speed of light as long as it's a transverse wave. Has no bearing whatsoever on anything that's a longitudinal scalar wave. Only it only applies to transverse vector waves, which means gravity and light and matter. All those things are transverse electrical waves, vector waves. 
But sound is not. It's a scalar wave, and it's longitudinal. And there's no limit on how fast sound can travel. And in fact, under extreme conditions, it has already been demonstrated that sound can go faster than the speed of light. I bet you didn't know that. Now you know. What if, as certain physics theories now are beginning to imply, there, the underlying structure beneath the strings and the membranes and all that stuff is an underlying scalar field? then waves that travel through the scalar field are longitudinal, not transverse, and they can travel at any speed you like. Okay? There's no limit to how fast you can get information from anywhere. You can just get it anywhere. Okay? Just a second. Um, so you now have the concept that how can psychics know things that are happening before they could possibly know things are happening? Well, if they're tapping into an underlying scalar field, that's not even an issue. Yes, there's a question. Yes. Well, that sounds like not locality. You know, that's entanglement. Yeah, it's not entanglement. That may be an explanation for how entanglement works. Yeah, but non-locality is like entanglement. It's a word that does, has no meaning because it's a symptom, not an explanation. But it's the same. It's, we're now starting to get into explanations of how things might work. Now, what is this underlying scalar field? Well, there are several candidates. Physicists like to talk about an underlying information field because that sounds suitably scientific. Okay? There is an absolutely brilliant man named Erwin Laszlo um, who, two-time nominee for the Nobel Peace, Nobel Peace Prize, won the Japan Peace Prize. Um, he is, is, his strength is systems theory. He believes in an underlying scalar field called the Akashic field. And why does he believe in that? Because he believes that the underlying field of, of a structure of the universe is such that allows all past information to be stored in all parts of the universe, which basically means the universe is a hologram. Okay? So if any no matter so if you're that's if that's true, then no matter where you are, you have information about everything that has ever happened and ever will happen everywhere in the universe. So you don't even have to worry about how fast waves translate because it's all right there anyway. Okay? The third possibility, Amit Goswami, who's a professor at the University of Oregon, believes that the underlying field is even more powerful than that, that it's an underlying consciousness field, and that the universe itself is conscious, and that to some degree we are, in fact, merely the dream of the universe. And on that note, I'm going to stop for a break. I'm sorry, excuse me, hold on, T time out. We have one very quick question. Maureen, um, if, if reality is the, uh, the scalar longitudinal wave, is there any discussion about the skills, the psychic skills, and where they associate on, that, on the reception of that scalar wave? Well, that's the whole point, is that psychic skills might in, involve nothing more than learning, learning to tune in to the information that's available in this scalar field. And, and, and would it be a case, for example, that the medium had a, um, a, a frequency tuning that is different than the clairsentient right. frequency tuning? Right, they're looking tuning. at it from different perspectives, exactly. So every, that would imply, by the way, that everyone can do all of those tasks, but they might be really good at listening to AM and but not so good at listening to FM. Not necessarily all of them equally well. So a really skilled medium might have to turn off the AM band in order to hear the FM. A really skilled remote viewer might have to turn off the FM in order to hear AM.